ठीक है Go through quickly the program today, guys. Just quick time. We'll just quickly go through um, the Friday sermon. Uh, as you know, today was was a special one. Well, there wasn't one. And then, uh, so we we'll just talk a little bit about that. We'll go to Zaitsev as usual. Then we we'll go to Kavi. If uh, you can take over the screen of Nas, Nas takes up quite a lot of it. <laughs> and then, um, inshallah, we'll, we'll go through one of the books of Hazim Simon. Usually Hamza does it. Hamza, because mashallah, he had his, his final presentations of uni to to officially cut off his his study days. So he, he was a bit busy with that. So I'll I'll just do that for him. And then um, inshallah, if Gaitsev comes on, we'll just get something from Gaitsev as well. Just to finish off. So it shouldn't be too long as well today. Keep it nice and short. And uh, Zaitab, is the big gift out today? Or is it? No, no, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow at um, 7.50. And then then it's in four days, which is on, I think, it's on um, Wednesday, I think. On Wednesday, then after that. So, yeah. So it's not today. It's, it's tomorrow. Tika, Tika. No worries. Do you guys. Welcome. Exactly, everyone, for, for coming on again. Third Dark Night Online. Got a nice packed program today, inshallah. Um, we'll just quickly go through um, today's today's khutbah. Uh, I think you guys all saw it. If any of you woke up late, then you would have missed the live message. Um, and uh, Private Secretary Saab, he basically gave um, a very emotional um, message, followed by Dr. Shimi Bati Saab. Um, so basically, as we know, what they from what they told us, um, Hazur Anwar, when he was in his outside his residence, um, he tripped over a, a mat um, and fell and injured his knees and his uh, forehead and um, other areas on his body. Um, and because the injuries are too too much to be able to, to lead Jummah, um, Huzur graciously accepted that he will take a break this time for this week. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, um, I've been talking to people and I've been asking uh, people around and the doctor Saab, who gave the message initially, he has said that Hamdullah Hazur is doing a lot better. So we should always remember Hazur in our prayers. And it was just a little reminder that uh, when the Khalifa, um, you know, when any any part of him gets hurt, the whole Jamaat feels it. And it's just like when the Quran says that um, any part, when one part of the body is hurt, then the whole body feels it. And so um, there's obviously the special du'a, Allahumma ayyid imamina bi ruh al-Qudus. So we should keep praying that and as much as we can. And remember as well in your prayers, because sometimes um, we take things for granted. We think that, you know, everything's fine, alhamdulillah. Um, we can just pray for anything else. But really, the man, the man we should be praying for most is, is Huzur. Because he's up all night, every night, praying for us. Um, and I'm sure that he he wanted his, to uh, deliver khutbah. And he probably fought them for it. But the doctors, this time, they... They got the upper hand and told Hazur to, you know, rest. And Hazur was obviously guided in that in that sense. So that was just a um, quick thing about Friday sermon. But um, there was a repeat that they showed. I think it's from 2008 and it was about Ramadan. And one point which was new to me, which I just want to share with everyone, um, is that Hazur said that sh- um, shaitan um, lives in our bloodstream. And it's like whenever we have any pain in our bloodstream or in our body, the blood quickly rushes to the pain, um, and we we'll compared that to to any weakness that we have in our in our morals or in our actions. Is that whenever we have uh, some sort of evil, um, Shaitan quickly jumps to it, and he tries to get there before before the angels do. And most of the time, uh, Shaitan does get there, and so uh, he's telling us um, to you know continue in this wrong manner. And so Zuru said that it's something really important and something amazing to to think about is that evil um, comes into our mind before anything. And Allah the Almighty hasn't given us the, the, the facility, the faculty to stop that because evil is invisible. It will just come into our mind. And so Allah hasn't given us the, the power to stop that, but he has given us the power to stop the next, the next action is to um, transform the evil into our, into our hands, into our mouth, and, basically reenacting what we're thinking. So what Huzur said that this is why we have to pray a lot of istighfar because istighfar stops those thoughts turning into actions. And so anyone who is, uh, 
anything bad that's come into your mind. Uh, the Quran speaks about these people, and these people are those people who are kazimin al ghayb those people who suppress their anger, who suppress any evil in their mind. And so that's why it's so important. Um, whenever you think about someone uh, someone in a bad so, way, or you're thinking about doing something in the wrong way, that thought Allah's give Allah's test Allah's saying to you that, you know, let's see what you're gonna do with this thought that's in your mind right now. So that's one of the things which uh, which is really important to do. And after doing istighfar, um, the aspect of Toba comes and we've I've talked about this before as well, but Toba was something which I learned a new aspect of today. It's like if I did something bad to you, Nas, I came to you, um, I punched you in the head, right? I can go about it three ways. I can go and say to you, uh, I'm really sorry, but then I can keep doing it and you are, you already forgive me, will you? Or I can punch you in the head, I can not say sorry, but then I can stay with you, you know, and, and you know, be cool with you, but you and I both know I've done something wrong and we should address it. Then the third step is I say sorry to you, I stick with you and I make sure you're happy and everything and we're cool and we're on, we're on level terms. And so that's what Toba is. Toba is once you've done istighfar, you stay and you show Allah that, you know, you've really changed and you're, you're willing to, to go, go about your day and think about what you did and just make that change in your life. And so that's why you can't have one without the other. Istighfar, ask Allah for forgiveness, and I say to Allah, look, I've turned to you now and I, I want to be a good person. So that's one thing which is really important, um, which I just wanted to, to share with you guys about what Friday's sermon was. Uh, I just want to ask you guys, how did you guys feel, man? How did you feel when uh, you turned your TVs on and you just saw Private Secretary Saab standing there? Because for me personally, I was shocked. I was like, Where's this word? <laughs> like what's happened? Just immediately all of us became, became worried. Zaid, what did you think, man? To be honest, today it was a bit of a, I mean, I wasn't home for Jummah, I had a bit of a, I was outside, so uh, it was some of a delay, so I couldn't, to be honest, I couldn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't home, and uh, I was just like, oh, you know what, oh, damn it, I've missed Jummah today, oh, damn it, you know, all my days, I can't believe it, you know, I've missed Jummah today, and then, then when I got home, and then my missus told me, um, you know, what, what had, had happened, so and I was like, oh, I haven't missed Jummah today. So <laughs> that was just my 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 thing to it. Like yeah. you know, I haven't, I haven't missed Hazul's address. So I mean, yeah. but obviously, when I did find out that Hazul obviously, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's hurt, and uh, obviously there was there was that deep concern, and you know, I was just thinking, you know, you know, we are all praying, and that's what you know we are doing eventually, <clears throat> and um, you know, that's what we do. Obviously, when we pray, we pray for Hazul. Mm. So it was, um, you know, it was something that I thought that I need to kind of really concentrate on and, um, you know, make sure that when I pray, when I done my Zohar, then straight away, you know, I, I, I remembered Hazur in there. So that was my reaction to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going through. And even while the recording was going on, I was still thinking, damn, and like Hazur is, Hazur is hurt and we're, we're sitting here all comfortable and, and nice. But as, as you've seen, Hazur never... He never doesn't do Juma. He always does something. And even if he's got like a, a really bad cough or like he can't speak for more than five seconds, he will still come and he'll still try his best to deliver a khutbah. So that's why it um, just pays more, just more attention to um, trying to pray for him. So Tiga, that's a, that was a quick sum up of Friday's sermon. Um, Zaid, I think we'll go to you now, just quickly. Um, been quite busy through the week. I know you made a presentation, so you can quickly go through that. Yeah, I've just, uh, before I go on my presentation, on the chat, I've just sent a, um, a little bit of information. So this is kind of, uh, I'll just explain to you uh, what I've just sent on the chat uh, while and I've shared my um, presentation. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it, can you can you see it there, Marvin? Yeah, I can okay. see it fine, exactly. Take care. So um, this week again, I'm just gonna uh, just briefly just gonna discuss about what's kind of happened, uh, you know, with the league 
and so on um, last week and also what we are trying to aim for, what our focus is in the coming week at the moment. And um, again, um, the most important one during Ramadan is um, the big virtual iftar. Obviously, you all know by now, uh, you know, we normally do a uh, big iftar, but due to the situation, we're doing big virtual iftar. So this is the most important thing at the moment, which is going on. I'm going to uh, speak about that, um, about the training, which is available to everyone on the call at the moment. And also just going to touch on um, the campaign, the Twitter campaign, which was uh, just, 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 I think, yeah, I think it was, what was it? What day was it? Sunday. Yeah, it was on Sunday. Uh, Ahmadis are Muslims. So it's a very important one. I'm just going to cover that as well at the end. So start off with big virtual iftar. So um, the, as, as you all have seen that um, uh, the message I've sent on the, um, on the chat is basically a message which you can forward to all your external contacts. So if it's your friends, if it's your neighbors, if it's you know, people who you work with, anyone that you have good kind of connection with and you know, you're trying to basically introduce them to Jamaat you know, so it's, it's a great initiative which has been set basically, you know, you don't really even have to do too much to it to, you know, physically invite them to a mosque. You all, all you have to do is kind of forward this message to them. But when you do forward this message to them, please just do try to edit it, try make it a bit personal, like, you know, write your own little message and try convert it and invite them by the link which is on, on the message as well. The link is, um, again, it's more highlighted from West Midlands. So if you sent them that link and they register through that link, then, you know, it shows that, you know, the effort that we are doing from our region. So please, you know, do um, invite your friends and do kind of send them. So all you literally, it's not much you have to do. You simply just have to kind of forward them this message and, uh, you know, it's, if, it's, as I said last time as well, it's kind of like an easy, easier way like for you to kind of cross that barrier of, you know, you're thinking that, oh, should I invite this person? Should I not? You know, but now you've got an opportunity of them to physically kind of, um, not sorry, physically, but for them to simply just join in this webinar where they can find out all the information that you've tried to, you know, try to tell them for the many years. So yeah, that's big iftar for you guys. It's um, where I'm pointing at the moment. The next one is uh, tomorrow. It's um, at uh, 7.50, yeah, 7.50 tomorrow. It's gonna be started. Also, there's a link, you know, which, which I'll send to everyone as well. You can also watch the big iftar with your families as well. It's great to watch, you know, what's going on while we're not at the mosque, obviously, at the moment. So it's good to keep up to date and what's going on, what they also telling your, um, you know your external contacts as well and the last one is going to be on the 20th I think that's a winner I'm not sure uh, but yeah so do watch them yourself as well invite your friends and you know please do do get involved in this one okay the next one um, that is uh, the bleed training and discussion um, all all these trainings which I've just put down here on the on the um, dots Basically, these are all the trainings that are available to you guys. I'm sure everyone on this call, most of you, I would say that you're on the NKA group as well, which is a Telegram group. And all those, um, the trainings, you know, which are, they're available to everyone, you know. So I've mentioned a few of them, which are like some of them, such as the uh, uh, Ramadan special. Big Iftar is also a part of the training. It also kind of, uh, you know, tells you about the Jamaat as well. It refreshes us as well. And what training that we have got, our regional one at the moment, is the one, the poster here, I've put this one here. This is specifically um, based around, just for, for our region as well, but also other members around the Jamaat, they can join simply by, um, you know, tapping on the link. And this one is every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Again, this one, at the moment, we're covering allegations. Um, with against Jamaat. So the allegations are a lot of allegations which you know non Ahmadis and non Muslims have put against uh, Jamaat. You 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 would have in your you know in your schools, in your workplaces, you know, heard of so many allegations that you know our opponents and people have put on us. 
and it, it's kind of really tough to kind of respond back to those allegations with, with, a, with a nice answer. You know, you don't really want to be rude to them because their message is, you know, most of the time very hateful. But our message is love for all and hatred for none. So when we are kind of conveying our message to them, we, we want to basically cover, co you know, cover the allegation by the reference of Quranic, you know, Hadith and all of this stuff. So it's important for everyone on this call, you know, I would emphasize that for you to join these trainings which are available there because literally you're getting the information straight to yourself and there's not much you're doing. If you, if, and most of these are uh, during the evening times as well. So if you're coming from work as well, you can join for that as well. And it's, it's there for you guys, you know, this, these trainings. So please don't, you know, try and miss out on these ones. All right, the final one. Uh, this is uh, very interesting. Now, um, this is the uh, uh, Amdi's are Muslim campaign, which was um, it was a bit of a was a bit of a last minute kind of a thing. I'll be honest with you. Uh, but before I, I, I speak about this, um, why are Amdi's campaign? Um, a few in the last couple of days, you most of you also be aware that. In Pakistan at the moment, a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, opponents a bit against Jamaat at the moment. And a lot of people are kind of really hyped up at the moment in Pakistan. And they're really trying to, you know, provoke and send in the bad message and just, just basically trying to spread hate, basically, and trying to threat every single Ahmadi who's in Pakistan as well and also in other parts of the world as well. And, um, you know, what Jamaat has done with this specifically at the moment, they've made a program where they've um, basically made, again, this is another training program, I'll be honest with you, for uh, to basically highlight some of the points which we can, you know, refer to and ask our opponents, you know. So if this is what they're saying to us, then this is our response to them. You try to answer these questions to us. So this was a program which was, on um, last Sunday, uh, 6 p.m. I think, or 5, 6 p.m. I think yeah, it was. 6 p.m. Yeah. But 6 p.m. Isn't it? Yeah. So what uh, the the league department done in this case was just to kind of make a bit more awareness of this, um, you know, of this program which was going to be live on. Uh, not sorry, it wasn't live on MTA to be honest. It was on YouTube. It one on, on to be on YouTube. What they've done is we the, the league department, uh, basically with other departments, they kind of put an initiative to do a campaign called Ahmadis are Muslims. So basically all the people who are actually, you know, very anti at the moment, just to kind of all to just to, to show them the true message as well, to be honest with you. So with this campaign, uh, which was on last minute, I really, really I was really proud with uh, quite a few of the Qiyadats in our um, region, in our region. So we've got nine uh, Qiyadats in our region out of the nine, Five of them, they took part in this campaign, actively took part in this campaign, retweeting likes, you know, tagging someone, et cetera, so on. And they pretty much done this in, in a, you know, in, in a few hours. I've just sent them all the information and they kind of literally responded to it and they kind of got on board. And within a few hours, they kind of, you know, there, there was, you know, retweeting and doing what they should be doing, obviously. And, um, uh, yeah, so this was a campaign. The Gyadats who took part in this campaign, they were Wolverhampton, uh, Southwest, Central, Warsaw, and East as well, East Birmingham as well. So there were obviously four who did not take part, did not see, but there were other Khudams across our region who did take part as well. I saw their Twitter accounts and so on, so I could see them getting involved. You know, it's, 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 you know at the moment, you know, physically, normally the league is, you know, it's a very good way to actually physically go out and give your message and convey your message. But obviously we can't do that. We're restricted to this at this present time. So what can we do? What we can do is that basically we've got these campaigns going on at the moment for, you know, the, these campaigns, I'll show you as well in a minute. These are actually reaching out to a lot of people, a lot of guys and a lot of uh, people that, you know, they don't even know about Jamaat. They don't even know if the Khalifa Messiah has already come. So it's a great way for us to kind of get involved in these campaigns. And literally all you have to do is just simply open an account. If you don't have one, just open an account. If you do, you simply just have to kind of retweet a, a um, 
the campaign which is already on there. For example, is why, why um, these are Muslims. You just simply have to retweet it just simply by tapping on it. And you know, you're doing tabligh there. Believe me or not, that is a part of tabligh as well. You're sending the message to someone across the world and someone can actually read your message as well. If obviously if your account is uh, public and you, you know, you should be liking it and you can also be sending your own tweets as well. So yeah, so next one. This one, um, this is a bit more ex what kind of happened during the campaign. So um, in Pakistan, I've put the trends, basically in Pakistan, uh, we came number one. We were trending number one for some, you know, some time. And that was, you know, that was amazing. Believe me, that is, that is something, you know, there's about, I don't know, nine, 200 million people who are in Pakistan. And if these people, they even just saw a glint of this and they saw that, you know, they, they would have questioned this off, you know, they would have questioned this off. So it's, it's a great way again of me just saying myself, it's a great way of doing the bleed, you know, doing it while so, social media, not, you're not going physically outside as well. You are literally just, you know, on your phones and just kind of tapping it. Whereas, you know, you, we all spend our times on our phone if it's wisely and, you know, we all play, play games. I play games as well. I'm not going to lie. I do, you know, but, when the time comes to actually actually get involved in these campaigns, please do get involved in these campaigns. Because if four, sorry, if you know five out of nine got involved, imagine if you know all nine got involved. Imagine if every single MD in the world got involved in this campaign. What kind of you know impact it would have made? So uh, yeah, and the next day on the, if you see the screenshot is that the next day the campaign unfortunately was Ahmadis are not Muslims. So that's what they came back, you know, that was their response back to us, you know, that was a, and they actually also are trending number one as well in Pakistan again. So, you know, the thing is, that is, is Ahmadis are number one in both. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I know, this see, thing in disguise as well. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's, that's there, you know, so, and on, on the right hand side, you will see, this is um, Rabi Saab, uh, Tahir Saab. What, um, Rabi Saab, what's this Tahir Saab's full name? I can't remember. Again. Tahir Khalid. Tahir Khalid. Tahir Khalid, yeah. He's, he's also a very uh, good friend of mine as well, to be honest. I remember back in when we used to have Aftar rallies and so on as well. So what, what he'd done was this time he sang a nazam, you know, about Hazim Muhammad and he, ran, you know, he sang it obviously with a very nice voice. And if you see at the bottom, this was the response from this uh, person who obviously is not Muslim. He said, you know, I want to know, know uh, how to join the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. So you can sim physically see yourself, you know, what kind of impact these campaigns are actually happening. This is just one, you know, uh, reply to this uh, thing. And if you can see how many views there are on, on you know, there's about 31,000 views in this. So, you know, th there is a lot which, you know, we can do by getting involved in this and uh, in the UK uh, we were trending number five I think we were trending we were trending five as well but we were mostly trending at number six for about a few minutes as well so that was that was good but again my question is to you guys is that you know could we have done better and I've already mentioned you know why how we could have done better that is pretty much it Jazakallah for listening and uh, just gonna stop the screen now Jazakallah, Marabi Sahib, and Jazakallah, everyone, for, again, listening up, man. Jazakallah, <laughs> bro. So I want to highlight that bit, um, that show. So the reason is, um, as you know, there's a lot of makhalfut anyway. There's a lot of opposition. For some yeah. people, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, that people are trying to get famous during Ramadan. Because Ramadan, yeah. everyone should be holy and everything. And they're saying, you know, Ahmadis are Muslims. So, um, what's his name, Makar? What's his name, Makar? What? Zakar, 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 Zakar. Zakar. Yeah, you guys, you guys know about him already. He uh, used to be my neighbor, sir. He used to be my neighbor. <laughs> you didn't show him out before, bro. <laughs> I can tell you about him because I protected him as well because I am really furious about that thing which that shit happened last week. What happened that uh, I used to go in academy, a coaching center where he came for the voting, like in election. He was. He stood from my area, and he was telling that give me a vote, I will collaborate with a big um, party, MQM Mutahara Gumi movement, and I will uh, give you all rights. And from one crore, like one crore, you can say that uh, from whole Karachi, he got only 22 um, votes, and he is from Shadatpur. His relatives are living next to me, 
and i am regularly going i i used to go in, in their relatives home i used to play cricket with their um, with their neighbors because he is murtad because he wait a second because i am on the show as well so he he was basically a murtad because i think her sister was married outside of the community and she was like a raj from jamaat and then he was like a rebellious guy and then his father is still in shadadpur living in shadadpur and he's so so like in a deep grief after this reaction his father is so disturbed his father is like is not feeling well as well wow his whole family is amidi and on twitter on youtube everywhere i am just commenting my team is commenting and everyone is commenting tell me about your son about your relative otherwise i will i will reveal all your contact details and everything where do you live how many members you are and how many members are still amidi and the pure amidi <laughs> Are you talking about Wakar? Are you talking about Wakar Zakar, or are you talking about the other one? Sorry. Are you talking about Wakar, or are you talking about the other guy who came on? No, I uh, I I contacted Wakar Zakar for that because I I have so many friends who is directly in contact with Wakar Zakar as well. Hmm. So I can I can handle him. I can handle him yeah. easily. Yeah. I know this guy <laughs> because he's know, from. Yeah, as you know, guys. Um, usually, whenever like people say things about the Jamaat, uh, the Nazul gives the instruction of you know just pray. but uh, you can see that we're going into another transition now um we're going to a transition where you know as was told us you know stand up and uh, <clears throat> answer back to these people so this show was actually very historical in that sense because it's in direct um, relation to what's what's happening recently so that's why um it's really important to try jump on the wagon and try to try to listen to these shows and uh, learn and learn what's what's um uh, what's happening around us so that's why I'll get I'll get to that later on as well inshallah um because the book that i'm doing uh, on the presentation is directly in accordance to to answering allegations against um, against the prophets so we'll get to that soon but first um the star of the show inshallah we'll get to you now um gobi bhai the legend of all souls and legend of midlands um we go way back uh, mainly during football days um i always just remember seeing you guys seeing your goatee and knowing this guy <laughs> this guy plays well so um that was my first introduction to you but um you can tell us much more just um the whole purpose of khadam as you know is just to get to know what each other do um everyone everyone does some sort of work so it's good to know what each other each other's lives are like and what you go through day to day and um how your life has impacted you with the jamaat and how the jamaat impacted yourself um uh, in your work life so um kabir sir um Assalamualaikum. Jazakallah for coming on. You came on last week as well, but um, you have the mic today. Yes, yeah. Now I'm not really prepared anything um as such so I'll be led by you and any questions anybody has. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good to um be online with everybody. Jazakallah. We can't be in person. Um yeah, so just a bit about myself. Most of you, most of most people will probably know who I am. Um few people probably won't. Um So yeah my name's Gavi I was born in Birmingham in um so my childhood was in Kings Heath area of Birmingham and uh, we lived there um since since I was about 10 up up till I was about 10 or 11 and then we moved to Walsall um grew up in Walsall mostly um and yeah just uh, it was taking two buses for 7 years to school in Birmingham went to the same school as uh, nas he's in there somewhere i think <laughs> in, in certain ball field it's hiding uh, there yeah yeah um yeah um before that um in terms of history my dada my dada john was the one who came here first in 1962 by ship um which took a month um to get here um and then yeah the rest is history so how how did you after going through school um how did you decide uh, I know you're going to tell us what you do now but how did you eventually get into that route of was it just you going with the flow just um whatever studies you were doing you enjoyed it and you were doing it or was it like so, really so yeah, in terms of um, studies I I didn't really know what I was doing uh, maybe a lot of people can relate to that um some people argue I still don't know what I'm doing <laughs> um but yeah um, I mean I knew that I wanted to do something science related um and uh, with us um although medicine was encouraged in all Asian families as it is um but 
I don't know, I was put off by it for, for quite a lot of time, probably owing to uh, one of our uncles who used to discourage us and give us some funny stories. Um, but then later on, I did realize that actually it is a good field. So anyone think about it should definitely seriously consider it. Um, and by the time um, that came, I think it was a bit too late for me in terms of where I was personally, um, family situation as well. Um, but I always knew I wanted to do something in science. Um, yeah, and then when I was actually studying as well in microbiology in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Um, so just before we get into the build-up of your, your actual work, what you do, uh, I always like discussing the, the Jamal side of it um, because most of us, before we get into work, we've already got like a, a good uh, bunch of experience before going into work. So what did you learn from your roles in the Jamal? What roles in the Jamal did you have that actually helped you with your work? Uh, well, I was lucky to serve as a um, guide for quite a few years. Yeah. Um, and really that's, it's, it really did, um, I don't know, you can't really put into words how it helped, but it helped in every aspect of your life, I would say, um, in so many ways, because there's so many transferable skills, which, which can relate to your actual working life as well. Um, uh, apart from that, you can put all your stuff in your applications, all the humanitarian work that we do the blood donation or even the, the communication aspect of it or even all of this this all counts as well um, because this is all transferable skills or writing emails um calls you know spoken written listening skills even as well it all comes into it yeah um, yeah i mean what do you think have i missed something this yeah is being guide of course that's that's the pinnacle i think um for any khadim I think that's when you really learn how to manage things, how to... Um, Time management, yeah. How to, uh, yeah, exactly. You have to manage your, your work and your Jamaat work. You know? When you don't have a big responsibility in Jamaat, you, know, you give more time to your work. But when you, give, when you have that Jamaat work, I think you, you're, you're more disciplined in knowing that, okay, I have to get these things done. So you just make time for it naturally. And of course, yeah. uh, as a family man as well, you, you'll know how, how difficult that is. But you just yeah. have, to, have to get into that. But we'll get there. But so we've we've talked about your Jamaat, we've talked about you've you've gone to work. So you what's your actual title and what's like your day to day your day to day job? Your day to day. Yeah, job. Um, yeah. Before that, actually, I will say for me, it's a it's a long road. Um, it it was a yeah. It took quite some time for me to get to where I am because um, at the time when I graduated, there wasn't many positions. Um, what I was going for so I was basically helping out my dad and volunteering um, with his businesses uh, mostly um, until until I got an opportunity to get my foot in and um, so I started off as a medical lab assistant okay. uh, part-time at New Cross Hospital in Wolverhampton I did that for about three years or so um, and then I got some opportunity to progress internally there which I did and then and then that's when I went, after a few years, I went to Devon for my trainee year. Mm. Uh, so I didn't do my placement year at university, which maybe I should have. Um, so I went to Devon to do my trainee year and then, not my trainee year, to do my trainee position. And then a few years there after doing that, I've come back now. Um, so yeah, so my, my title is a specialist biomedical scientist. It's a big word, but all it is, it's just, it just means that I'm, uh, I'm just working in the lab um, and we receive um, patient samples and uh, specimens which we perform analyses and tests on mm. in order to find and isolate the cause of infection and illness. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can imagine uh, me trying to tell my mom uh, what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's quite, um, we can relate, we can relate to that nowadays, especially with um, the coronavirus. <laughs> And um, I know life was probably a bit different before all this, all this panic started. But how's life now? Um, with, of course, we've, got, we've gone through so much of it, we're almost used to it now. Uh, we're almost used to everyone wearing the mask. So we're all essentially living like a doctor in a way. But how, in, in terms of uniform and everything, but how's, how's life changed in, in your workplace? Um, so, yeah, you know, so when we're in the work, when we're in the lab uh, working, we have to wear um, personal protective equipment, PPE, as it is anyway. Mm. Um, so for us, that consists of like a lab coat, 
and gloves and safety specs where indicated. Um, besides that, there's a specialist um, room um, which is called a containment level three room where we process respiratory samples um, because with respiratory samples, the risk is aerosols and breathing that in, um, which exposes you to whatever you're dealing with or manipulating with at the time. So traditionally it's mostly been TB work. So any sputum sample or bronchial washing samples or cough swabs for cystic fibrosis patients, um, things like that, they'll get processed underneath a, a cabinet. It's called a, a class one safety cabinet. So it go, everything goes through a, it's called a HEPA filter, which um, kills all particles. Um, and there's negative airflow suction, so no air comes back at you so that there's no risk of you breathing it in. Um, so that's where these um, COVID samples are processed as well, um, when we are doing them as well. Um, sorry, your question was how's, how's, how yeah. has it changed? Um, so basically, um, as we all know, GP surgeries have mostly been closing, although they are starting to, I think some places are starting to reopen. I'm not sure what the case, what the case is with GP is still. I think it's still um, closed actually. Um, so our routine workload has become less, um, but the other side with all these COVID swabs, um, that's, that's coming now in its place and we've had to reshuffle and reprioritize um, what we're testing. Yeah. Um, so for us, uh, the most important samples in microbiology is uh, your sterile fluids and blood cultures. Um, so when you hear about meningitis, so there's um, a CSF sample which comes to us as soon as possible. So it's important that we look at that. That's still going. Nothing's changed there. Um, blood culture samples. So you might have heard in the press and media sepsis as well. So um, we still look at that urgently along after that or alongside that then it's these COVID samples and all this um, government response which is um, initiated so we've been a big part of that um, in terms of testing capacity in the labs which you're probably hearing in the news um, yeah. every day as well uh, <clears throat> so a lot of the work is referred as well um, and we're actually testing in-house the most urgent um, or the most urgent patient samples um, a lot of the work is referred to New Cross Hospital um, because our lab, lab is going to be joining um, with New Cross Hospital. It's going to be a, a hub there. So in the NHS, there's a lot of um, cost saving and cost cutting going on. Um, so they're initiating this hub and, hub and, spoke, pro, hub and spoke model of labs. Um, so already we've started tr transitioning um, there and there's going to be a lot of samples going over there as well. So we're referring a lot of work that way as well the urgent swabs and samples we are testing in-house um mostly that's how it's changed um that's crazy yeah. so just linking to that um just last week uh, two weeks ago we spoke to hasham dr hasham and we spoke about how this impacted his family life and i know you have actually you have two kids as well and um you coming from work you know you have to take precautions and uh, there's a high risk, especially you coming from a lab, you testing all these um, different yeah. viruses and infections. Um, how did that affect you? And initially, how did you first when you thought about it and you saw like in the news that, you know, you can't have contact with, with your kids and stuff. How did that initially? Uh, affect initially you? How did you how did you manage it and how are you dealing with it now? Yeah, initially, my daddy, my daddy called and said, Kavi, kaam pa jana, <laughs> <laughs> She said, please, please work. You shouldn't go there. So obviously I couldn't do that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, um, it's, it is still shocking really if you think about what's happened within a matter of few months, like the whole country shut down and um, the effect is happening. It's, it's like once in a generation, the last pandemic comparable was in 1918, the Spanish yes. um, flu that happened. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's just, um, yeah, it's just shocking. Even now, just when you think about it, it is, and you know, trying to explain to, to everyone to take it seriously and it's, it seems surreal often when you look at it in the news you think that it, you, it can't reach you sometimes i think some people think that way um but it's just getting across the importance of the instructions um of the government and, and what hazura said obviously to comply, to comply with those instructions because it, it really we don't know what effect it can have to and to whom because 
as we've seen healthy individuals have um, have been affected by it as well. Um, so yeah, for for me, um, obviously for healthcare staff, NHS staff, um, whether you're on the front line or even if you're not, you're at increased risk. Um, and at the same time, I should say as well, care staff as well, care home staff. Yeah. Um, in that um, field as well, they are at increased risk as well. Um, so what I've been doing is um, when I'm getting back. I'm not as as much as a risk as the frontline staff, as the doctors and nurses, mm. and porters, because um, they're directly involved with patients. So my feel is more with obviously the samples, as I've explained. Um, but still, those samples, if you think about it, they're coming from um, different parts of the hospital, from sick patients, from those doctors and nurses and porters who are transporting those samples. Yes. So in the process, you know, it could have been the case that these samples have um being into contact with five six different people so it could be carrying all sorts of things um so we still need to take high precautions um still um so what i've been doing is i've been um as soon as i'm home i'm going straight up into the shower changing clothes um going straight into the wash um obviously hand hygiene is really important mm -hmm. um washing hands a few many times um yeah, same as everyone else, trying not to touch anything. Um, yeah, and then once I've done that, then I'm I'm good to go. The rest is all, you know, you just pray. Um, but yeah. Even the kids, they have to like, you know, you have to wait for them. So yeah, with the families or with the kids, when I get back from work, the kids are running to me. I'm like, no, no, no. And they're all confused. They're too young to understand what's going on. So it is difficult. Um, yeah. Apart from that as well, I've made arrangements. Um, so we're quite lucky that um, we can make arrangements um, with the trust where I work um, for them to um, have a hotel room ready in case I do begin to develop symptoms. So if I, say if I begin to de develop symptoms or if I'm not feeling too well after work, I'll just go straight there. And they've, they've provided that, they've taken care of that. So that that's, um, that's, that's a good thing. So I'll be able to self-isolate in that respect as well. Mm, sure. um, but yeah, even thinking of that, that would be hard as well, but it's something which, yeah, will need to be done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If anyone has any questions, you can please just get them ready. Just start asking them as, as we're talking. But for me personally, I just find it really interesting, especially because we're always hearing in the news, you know, um, NHS, they're doing an amazing job and, you know, clap for NHS and all those, all those things. I'm sure people have probably been, been telling you as well. Maybe <laughs> because uh, maybe some some of you wear badges and things like that, so people will recognize straight away that you're you're working for the NHS. Yeah. Um, Actually, I know that with, that, with our field, it's more it's more behind the scenes, so no one ever hears of um, biomedical scientists. It's always doctors and nurses. Yeah. And that, um, but with this pandemic, it has actually brought it more into the limelight. I mean, the chief executive of the IBMS, which is one of the um, organizations which represents us. Um, he's been giving interviews up and down the country as well, um, and all this testing um, malarkey that's been going on with tests not test targets not being met and whatnot. But it has brought a bit more to the front of what our work is. Yeah, so it's good we're talking about it then, isn't it? <laughs> good to highlight you guys as well, just as as we should. And uh, this this is exactly what the opportunity uh, brings when we have Khadam. Like, you know, we give we give voice to these people who. Um, you don't really hear about and you know they're working but we don't we know we don't actually know what you're actually doing so it's really nice to hear hear your your side of the story and yeah, it's really yeah, no, if anyone wants out. more information i'm available on a private call as well if anyone wants to know in more detail yeah, exactly. anyone, anyone's yeah. has anyone got any questions Zaid, do you have any questions for, for Kobe, yeah i've got i've got a question um you know what you you're well? mentioning about um <laughs> You know, you were mentioning about the different other samples that you also deal with apart from uh, COVID at the moment, yeah. uh, which is normally um, what you face, uh, I mean, which you normally deal with um, in your normal uh, time apart from when this COVID was. What, what is, uh, I mean, like, just to understand, like, I mean, a bit more about what you do as well and a bit more about the lab, I mean, the samples. Uh, what is the difference between, you know, the, no, the ones that you normally do and the ones that I think you said that you, you know, you prioritize them first or you're doing them first yeah. and then. Yeah, sorry, I, I probably didn't make myself uh, very clear. Um, so, so the most samples which I mentioned were like your CSF samples, 
um, and blood culture samples. So there's different parts or sections of the lab. Um, so it's split. So there's like the urine bench, there's enteric bench, which is your fecal analysis, poo samples. You know, someone's got to find out all, all the source of this diarrhea. Um, UTI, urinary tract infections, um, respiratory infections, normal respiratory infections, um, TB, um, which is caused by mycobacteria. Um, and then there's other serology aspects which come into it um, in terms of looking for, rather than growing the organism, uh, looking for the body's antigen or antibody response. Um, in order to diagnose infection um, and see if you're immune to it. Um, so, yeah, so a lot of the work is split into sections. Um, the priority, like I mentioned, is are those samples. So, I mean, I, I don't know how much detail you're asking, Zaitsab. I mean, is... No, it's just that, um, you know, due to this, obviously, like, now everyone's, like, kind of, like, COVID, COVID at the moment, isn't it? And it's all yeah. COVID. I mean, uh, the other, the other uh, things that you normally do, are they kind of are they still the priority still there or are they much more higher priority than COVID anyway? Or so no, they are probably more of a priority in many cases because sepsis will kill you much faster than COVID. COVID will. So so by sepsis I mean like blood poisoning you might have heard in the media. So if you've got bacteria running through your uh, bloodstream, um so what we'll do is the blood is the blood is taken from the patient at the bedside by your nurses or doctors and it's transported to us as soon as possible. I'm just giving you an example now. It's loaded onto a, a blood culture machine. It's essentially like, a, like an oven, you can say, but we call it an incubator. Um, and it's, it goes through automated monitoring and it, it, takes, it measures various parameters. It actually measures, it's very clever technology which, um, which, it, um, which it uses. So it measures like CO2 production of bacteria, it shows that they're respiring. And once it reaches a, a certain level, it will flag on the machine. So we'll take that off when it flags. Uh, we'll make like a gram film of that. It's something called a gram stain, which some people might have studied. Um, so there's, that's a specialized technique um, where we stain to look for bacteria and we can tell, and then we look at that under the microscope and then we can tell what that means, what shape it is, whether it's gram positive or gram negative. And even just by that information, and that's very helpful to, to the doctors. They can start um, treating the patients. Um, apart from that, uh, we put some, some blood onto culture media, onto agar, where we grow, grow those organisms. Um, so traditionally, that, so that takes 24 hours. So the next day, we'll come in and look at the plates. And then we'll ID what's growing. And then we can have a definitive answer as to what it is. And um, so for blood cultures, that's very important. Um, for um, CSF samples, um, cerebrospinal fluid samples for query meningitis, um, is that's very important. That's we have to come out any time during the night or day for that, so we can get called out in silly times in the night um, for that. Um, so the reason for that is so we we will have to look for um, white cells in the actual sample. Um, so a raised white cell count and then the type of white cells there are um, will will give you an idea of, as to what kind of infection it can be. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's on a par with the COVID samples as well. Because So essentially, if everything shut down, it would be the sterile fluids bench and the COVID samples, which would be processing and everything else can wait. So UTIs can wait. You're not going to die from that immediately. Mm. Um, another other benches can be shut down. So that's what we were doing. We are reprioritizing with our staffing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Jazakallah. G. Sorry, has anyone else got any, any questions? I've got one. Um, go ahead. How many samples do you do in a day like for COVID? Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, um, it's at, the, at the moment, it's around 100 samples or so. Um, which we are receiving um, out of those. We've got an allocation actually as to the most urgent samples, which we will do in house. Uh, so by urgent, I mean, we can have a result within, um, within an hour. We can have a result within an hour. So we can say whether somebody has 
um, coronavirus. So it's actually a, it's a PCR test, um, which, um, which can give you a rapid result. So you're basically looking for the coronavirus genome, um, which you can look into if you're interested in that. You can do a Google search. It's quite interesting um, how that works. Um, so 100 samples or so. Um, in the peak a few weeks ago, we were had up to 600. So you can imagine the workload that was, you know, we were basically using different cabinets all over the lab and we shut down most things and everyone was getting involved trying to get these samples out um, and processed um, and tested in-house, the ones which needed testing. Um, so it was a massive, it was a massive uh, impact and change um, to normality. But right now it's calmed down a little bit. Um, but depending on what the government strategy will be going forward, um, it will, we'll see what happens to that, yeah. Any other questions? Just one question from you, last question. Um, for anyone who's going into biomed, um, do you have any advice for them um, in preparation for that? Um, I'm not sure what the requirements are right now in terms of university, but hmm. um, yeah. Um, then you need science subjects um, and maths. Um, so there's different disciplines you can, which you can go into. So I've chosen microbiology, that's my speciality, but there's blood sciences, there's chemistry, um, there's histopathology um, as well. Um, but it's, it's quite good. I'm still learning as well, I'm enjoying um, at the moment. Um, so you'll need to do a, um, a registration portfolio, um, which, you can either choose to do it as part of your university. Um, you can choose to do that as part of your university um, placement year, or you can do what I did, which was a, a long-winded uh, way to do it afterwards, do a, do a trainee a trainee position, and then do it that way. Um, and that enables you to get um, registered with the HCPC, which is the Health and Care Professions Council. Um, and then the, the good thing is, well, for me, I enjoy it. it's lifelong learning. So it's called CPD, um, continual professional development. You have to always be doing something to be putting into that folder and progressing. Um, <clears throat> and then you have a master's for a senior post as well. And then you can either go down a managerial route or you can start low coming or you can completely change. You can start going into sales. Um, that way, or there's a bit of a transition into um, clinical scientists, which is um, a lot more patient focused as well, which I think, inshallah, um, with experience, I look to try to go into as well. Um, so there's there's lots of opportunities um, there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're just talking about um, Kobe's, Kobe's career, and Humla, it's been a very good talk so far. Um, we're just going through the questions now. Everyone's asking questions. I think we just had our last question. Uh, sorry, uh, Sam, I'm sorry I'm late. Rabbi Sam, you look very uh, festive. Um, <laughs> uh, not in the Mum, um, uh, uh, if you don't... Mum, turn your lights off. Thanks, Mum. Um, I'm so sorry I come on late, man. I was uh, got caught up and then um, uh, I've just only got three, but... Um, can you briefly <laughs> go through it again? <laughs> just in a nutshell, so I can just, just jog my memory. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, sorry, can we, if you don't can you sum up your me, life in a, in a nutshell? My life in a nutshell. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so I was just talking about what I, what I was doing um, recently, um, what's been going on, and we were just talking about um, the COVID samples and how that's um, affected the laboratory. Um, prioritization and what it is. Um, so I was just saying that uh, we're getting close to 100 samples a day at the moment um, in mm. City Hospital. Um, at its peak, we had about five to 600 samples. Wow. Um, so the most urgent we're testing in-house. Um, so by that, um, we, that means that we can have a result within the hour. Um, um, a lot of the samples we're referring, um, and because we're part of this, this group called the BCPS, um, which means that there's going to be a lab merger. So the lab at New Cross Hospital, which is going to, which we're going to be joining with, and well, it was meant to be towards the end of this year. It might be somewhat delayed now, mm. um, but we're referring samples over there as well. Um, actually, um, you might have heard in the news there's been a shortage of reagents. Okay. Um, so that's actually affected us as well now. So 
we've stopped sending a lot of the samples to Newcross and we're sending it to a private lab, I think, which is a lab which has been set up. Maybe it's for this purpose. Um, yeah. Um, it's going, so a lot of the samples are going to Nottingham as well now um, because of this reagent issue. So they're using a different testing platform, which is, uh, which doesn't use those reagents, which is why we can send it over there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about. Talking you know, about um, the antibody test got thingy yesterday, didn't it? Yes, yeah, that's, um, it's that's a good delay, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Because even at our work, they've said that we can, um, we can be tested now, but at that point, it was only the antigen test. But yeah. now with the antibody test, there's no, there's no getting away with it, is it? If you... <laughs> yeah, that's what, I, that's what I've been saying. I want to be the first one to have the, uh, <laughs> the antibody test as I want to know if I've had it. But do you know that antibody test? I heard it's also, again, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you know, but it's only for like a month or so. Or, and then you can still get the disease, uh, the COVID. So yeah, that's what they're saying. They're not sure if, um, well, how long immunity lasts anyway. Um, yeah. So whether it's useful or not, that's still up for discussion. Yeah. Um, but in theory, that's what they're saying. Um, so, so what it is, there's an antigen test and an antibody test. So if you've got the antibodies, that means you've had the virus. So you should, in theory, have some sort of immunity. Uh, mm. But yeah, we don't know whether, it's, um, whether it lasts or not. I think there's long-term studies going on and there'll probably be some coming out from China. Uh, yeah. What the case is. The vaccine, we're probably looking at... Um over a year or so aren't we that's what they're saying but there might be something fast packed towards the end of this year who knows um, okay, fine. yeah probably to mass produce that that's the other issue isn't it yeah it be, to be available to a mass population probably talking next year it's yeah. mad man honestly yeah. one virus is there was a video on instagram um someone from the future in 2024 he came back to 2020 and asked himself, what year are you in? And he said, 2020. He's like, oh, you're just going through the four-year coronavirus. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you never know how long it's going to last. It's just yeah, that's crazy. the other thing. We don't know how long it's going gonna, it's gonna to be around. So I think these changes that have been introduced, they're going to be <clears throat> around for some time. And even if, you know, um, our Prime Minister Bojo you know, says everyone, everything back to normal, um, obviously, we should still, um, you know, go with caution and take into um, consideration what's been said already in terms of social distancing yeah. um, and what Hazura said with all the um, remedies and instructions which have um, been given. We should still be very careful. Um, yeah. mm. Salman, I think you had a question. Uh, let's go to Salman quickly because he put his hand up like a good boy. Salman's video is not on. <laughs> <laughs> the man, are you there? That was accident. That's also someone. Yeah, of course. That's that's like when the teacher asks you a question. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I was just stretching. Salman <laughs> oh, smashed it. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that all right then? Yeah, can I have any more questions? Are you good? No, um, I think uh, with Kavi, I know it's. Um, he went away for a while, didn't he? And then now, alhamdulillah, he's back. So, uh, I'm, yeah, so I briefly I'm, mentioned, I didn't go into too much, too much detail. Yeah. So obviously, no, I'm just happy you're back, man. So it's good, <laughs> good to see you back, man. Uh, it is good to be back. It is good to be back. It is a different life in Devon. It's really yeah. good. Um, it was good to have a break as well. Um, but it's it's really beautiful area, southwest coast mm. path. You know, I recommend mm. everyone to um, go around there. It's, you lot, you lot all had a trip once, and and didn't tell me in that. So. Yeah, the Khadam trip, the last time yeah. we stayed at. Um, how how we, how we organised that one and didn't tell him until on the day, I think. <laughs> he there, wasn't he? Yeah, he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was a really good time. We had a nice barbecue as well. Mm. Should arrange something like that again once, uh, well, once, once, this, once this all settles down. <laughs> yeah, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Tiga, close up. Jazak, well, thank you so much. And to reward you, um, it's going to play a little video uh, in memory of, of Kobe Thorpe. And uh, inshallah, I hope it works. Just let me know if, if the sound and everything works, guys. Yeah. Can, you, can everyone see that? Yeah. Okay. So it's called Ever Wondered How Khodamna is Planned. Here you go. It's going to quickly, hopefully, the sound works. Yeah. Hope you enjoy. I bet NASA's done something with this. <laughs> Finish the question. Finish the question. Yeah, 
<laughs> These are how my questions are made. <laughs> <laughs> the the anti <laughs> And that's the planning stage. <laughs> this is why your question is always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is why most of them are right. And then look, Zucky came along. Zucky is the actual professor and he's yeah, he rubbed out all the plans. He rubbed out all the plans and then made his own. Zucky had other ideas, huh? <laughs> like you said, lessons over, lessons <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, that was just a little little insight way of how we plan for them. Like that's why guys up it's so last it's so last minute. That's why we can't get our links out in time. <laughs> no, no, no. That, 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 that was very nice. You can yeah. just exactly like always said, it was really nice. Exactly. We wanted to keep that surprise for you as well. <laughs> reward you for your talk <laughs> thank you but, uh, um guys uh, as you know um uh, going through difficult times and um there's no better time now to read um as a museum of books and they're so important and um it's this coronavirus period this quarantine time has given us a really good opportunity to to read books um, um hamza usually does the presentations but today i'll, I'll just take over um, because um, there was one book which I really was inspired by and it's very um, within time um, I really hope that uh, we can learn something from it so I'll just quickly go through it um, the book is called um, A Message of Peace and you might know about it um, the main thing about this book is is that it's um, it's the last book Hazem Asimo de Lestat Aslam ever wrote and in fact he never actually finished this book he was uh, in the middle of writing it. Um, if you just quickly look, um, it's only um, 50 pages. Um, it was originally written in Urdu in 1908. And as, as you know, Hazem Masim of the Lestat passed away in 1908. So it's a really small book. Um, it's something which you can easily read. And for me, the way I was looking at this book, the angle I was looking at it was, it's his final days. And let's see what kind of message after all the journey he's been through Let's see what kind of message he, he extracts um, from that book. So a small introduction. Um, this book uh, was written just in two days and um, before the demise of, of Hazem Muslim of the Day Islam. It was completed in, in January. Um, he calls out two nations. Um, as you know, he's living in India. Uh, the two main people there are the Hindus and the Muslims and the fight between them and he's trying to find a solution to to solve the to bridge the gap and the main thing that he said was <clears throat> none of this is religious the fight that you are having none of it is religious it's all cultural and it's all um uh, habits that you have both instilled and that's the main reason and he said if you look into religion then you realize that we don't need to fight anymore because uh, he said that islam inculcates respect and reverence for each other and for elders and for leaders and so that's one of the main uh, aspects of, of um, Islam which is what the Muslims weren't getting and which was the Hindus weren't getting and they weren't understanding this concept and they weren't actually highlighting this bit to to show that you know we're not going to fight with you because um, our religion teaches respect for each other um, it, to the point where as a Muslim or even says that we we regard um, Krishna and uh, Ram Ch Chandjarivi as, as saints and the book uh, which they follow is called the Vedas and uh, as Masimo said that we consider this book as something from God so the, these were some few points uh, which as Masimo list up to Islam uh, and <clears throat> quickly just to just to say this that he basically urged mainly the Hindus the Hindu people that you know extend the hand of friendship to the Muslims 
And if you do that, you'll see that all these crawls that you're having, um, they'll go away. And so this is something which uh, we need to think about in today's world. Um, all the Muslims which are portraying Islam in a negative way, um, we should really think about that. So quickly, what Hazim Asim al Islam said, he said, in order to have complete peace, the Hindu gentlemen and the Arya Samajis are prepared to accept our Holy Prophet as a true prophet. If they are willing to accept him uh, and give up denying and insulting him, I will be the first person to sign an agreement to the effect that we, the members of the Ahmadiyya sect, should always continue to believe in the Vedas and speak of the Krishnan, the Krishan, uh, in the most respectful terms, and bind ourselves to pay the Hindus a penalty of 300,000 rupees. In case we, fought, we fail to fulfill the agreement, um, if the Hindus uh, cordially wished for this peace, they should also sign a similar agreement. Now remember, as Masimot, last few days of his life, uh, last months of his life, and he's extending his hand out just to say to the, to the Hindus that stop insulting our Holy Prophet. Stop insulting him and saying abusive language. I'm willing to even sign an agreement of 13, 300,000 rupees, which was an enormous amount uh, in that time. Like it would be thousands of pounds uh, if you were translated to, not to, to today. And so he goes, even just so that you stop um, abusing him and, uh, and we will sign this, this agreement. And if we fall short, then we will pay this money to you. So this is the level where of uh, the Aryas, especially of how much uh, abuse they gave to the Holy Prophet And in that time, Hazim Simad was known amongst not just Ahmadis, but all Muslims, that he was the person to defend Islam. If there was ever a debate with anyone, they would send him because they knew that he was the most scholarly and they knew that he was the Majadid. So um, this was a really important thing which I just wanted to highlight. And um, it just teaches us that, you know, how we should defend um, the Holy Prophet And as you know, Hazim Asim al Islam. So this was a powerful message. Um, this is one thing which I wanted to highlight. As we say, uh, Zayat Sabi said at the beginning is of, of love for all hatred for none. But just to speak a little bit about that, um, as the Masimo said, the religion is we refrain from all that is banned by God and we run on his despite the desired paths and treat all his creation with sympathy and kindness and to have belief in all the divine messengers and the prophets of God who appeared from time to time and we do not discriminate among them and to serve every man with affability. This is the gist of our religion. So that's, that's one side. But there's also the side of if someone is uh, cursing uh, a prophet, how do we react to that? So as a Masimod gave the answer, he said, um, but those people who without any justification and without any fear of God, use words, use bad words about our exalted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah uh, and le level unholy allegations and speak about him rudely, how we can have peace with them? How can we have peace with them? I say with all the emphasis at my command, we may make peace with snakes and saline land and wolves and of the wilderness, but we will never make peace with those miscreants who attack our prophet, who is more dear to us than ourselves and our parents. God give us death before we do anything which may cost us uh, our Islam. So this is something really important for everyone to understand you know whenever you're on social media whenever you're you're listening to people hurling abuse to Hazim Asim or the list out of Islam or the Holy Prophet or Islam in general we can't just sit down and just listen to it and say you know it's fine Allah will curse them. you know you need to um, as soon as you see it you need to step up and you need, you need to write something against them and say something against them you know because if they're not gonna if no one's gonna stop them they'll just keep going and going and as a Muslim, the list Islam showed us the right way. And he would, as you can see, the words are very, um, very harsh and they're very strict and they're very um, strict because um, this is to do with the Holy Prophet. And no man alive loved him more than as a Muslim of the list of Islam. He said, even, he said, we'll even deal with the snakes and the wolves and every, every beast that's on this land. You know, they're fine. But... These people who hurl abuse against the Holy Prophet, they're even worse than them.
So that's why we need to stand up and really try to try to react. Just as Zaid Saab was saying at the beginning, you know, we need to get involved in these things, and it's so easy. Um, you're not confronting anyone. You you on your phone, and you can literally just send messages. You can send tweets, and it's so easy. So everything's in our hands. Um, once a khadim even asked Huzur and said to him, you know, all these abuses that are happening on social media, what should we do? Should we just read them and just stay quiet? Or what should we do? And Huzur said, you should all bombard any, 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 um, any tweet, any, um, any channel, or any, um, any sort of thing which is published. You should bombard it to the, to the level that, you know, they'll realize themselves that what they've said is wrong. And you know yourselves, whenever you put anything contradictory on social media, you'll get thousands of messages sent to you directly and people even cursing you and this and that. So we need to make them feel that what they're saying is wrong and what they're doing is wrong and you can't uh, abuse the rights of people's religion. Um, so these are just some of the ways uh, how you can defend through social media, through writing essays, healthy discussions and all this is just to remove misconceptions because 99% of the time these people don't know what they're saying. They're just following what people have told them, uh, what their imams have told them, what they've read, but they don't actually look into um, their religion. We can, we can do the same. We're very susceptible to that weakness as well. We can't say for 100% what we know about other religions. Almost as, actually, we don't know anything because we just, we're told everything about Ahmadiyya, but we don't look at the other side. So that's why it's important to educate yourselves. And it's so easy now, as I said, you don't have to confront anyone you and your phone and just like that you can defend islam before people were defending islam with swords and giving their lives and now it's just about our own effort and we're in an era where we're we're, we're testing mostly our patience and our uh, initiative and so these two things you must really look at yourselves and uh, try your best so all it takes is your initiative so that's really the main thing um, which i wanted to discuss um, that's a quick one uh, on a message of peace. The last book of Azam Sima written in 1908. So remember that, guys. Uh, if you ever get a chance, pick it up and read it because this is just obviously just a summary. But uh, the main learning is when you guys actually pick it up and read it. Uh, Nas, quick time. Go to you quickly, man. I don't know if you guys know Nas is a he's a silent, a silent knight, and no one knows about. Listen, this, this, you know that. You know, nothing. The you know, like, let me just say. Let me just say this, man. Let me just say. Do you know this quote that Azul said about bombarding um, and replying to these people? Nas, um, Mashallah, he's, he does. He does exactly that. And whenever he sees uh, people writing anything about Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's always messaging me and he's telling me, "Look, I'm, I'm answering this guy. Tell me how to answer him, or uh, not even tell me how to answer him. He's doing it himself, and he's just agreeing with whatever I'm saying because he said." I've already done that. So Nas, just quickly, man, just tell us, yeah. tell us what you do and how, how easy it is and what we can do ourselves. Well, to be, first of all, I don't do anything. It's not my, like, I don't think it's my job to go around, like, you know, <laughs> it's just something that you sh everyone should do. Um, but what I think what I was referring to is um, there's one day, I think the Jamaat was pushing forward a hashtag on Instagram. And I personally, I didn't know about it. And... I think it got so well recognized that even some of like the people that hate on the Jamaat, they picked up on it and like basically on Instagram where it was, someone put up a picture of the Promised Messiah and they said, you know, all these rude things. And I remember in the comments, everyone was just full of hate, 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 hate. And all I did was I just went on to Al Islam and there was, uh, I was some, there was some piece of information I was on there. All I did was put the link on and send it about, which, which is literally exactly what I was said to do. I bombarded it. I sent it to everyone that was there, like talking all these lies and stuff like that. And then, you know, eventually uh, at the end of it, that post got taken down. And there were, it wasn't just me. It was a couple of other guys that were there that were trying to, you know, like prove them wrong. But it was... As Mohammed said, like having healthy discussions is like the proper thing to do. But they were just getting filled with, you know, swears and stuff like that. And personally, I think that stuff is pointless to deal with people like that. You should just send in what's facts and not have to deal with, you know, these people just going crazy. And at that point, it becomes pointless. And basically what happened was 
uh, when I was putting all these uh, links up and sending it to everyone, one person messaged me and he's talking about having a healthy discussion and I, you know, we debated a few things and it's just people like, there's people that are closed minded and they don't want to listen. No matter what you say, if you tell them one plus one is two, you know, they'll just always think it's three and they won't care what you have to say. They just want to say their thing and that's it. And then, you know, it just becomes pointless. So actually, I want to ask Murabi Saab as well. How do we deal with people that don't want to listen? Like, how do we have a, a create like a proper good debate where it becomes, you know, useful for both of us mm. instead of like someone just giving out, you know, hate and saying, oh, no, you're wrong. But then even though you give back clear cut evidence, yeah. it's just, it doesn't make a difference. And the thing is, but, I don't know. Much. Obviously, I go with, you know, all Islam and, yeah. and a lot. What I do is, and I've told Murray Sab is that um, MD answers there, it's really good. Like, I make it a habit that I, when I'm having my iftari or, you know, after iftar, like, I always end up watching a video and it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Just remember, I always give this example. Remember the Holy Prophet, <laughs> the man who was sent to reform all of mankind. Even he couldn't make everyone Muslim, you know? So don't think that you can you can force your ideas and make people listen to whatever you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, the key thing is that you just give the right message, you defend mm -hmm. Islam, and you provide the information because it's not necessarily that the person you're talking to is the person who's going to actually open his heart out. There'll be more people reading your comments to the person uh, because social media is so open now. And more people could be reading what you're saying. And usually what happens in debates and live debates is the person who you're debating with isn't actually the person who's affected. It's the people listening who are affected. And it's just like when you're in a court and the jury are listening, you know, those people are the ones being affected and it's them whose, whose ideas are going to be formed. So it's, it's, it's exactly the same thing. Whenever you're talking to someone, try to have that idea in your head that, you know, you're not some savior, you're not the, um, not some reformer that's going to change this person immediately. Just keep on providing what the Jamaat's been, been teaching you right from the beginning. Keep saying the truth, what you believe is the truth, and educate them. Because even in Islam, uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that um, knowledge is the lost property of a Muslim. And so knowledge can come from anyone, even from a beggar. You know? So that's the, that's the whole idea, and that's the intention you should be doing it. Uh, it shouldn't be to convert anyone. You're just to defend Islam, and that's... That's the battle which Islam taught us to do. So yeah, man, just keep keep doing that. And whenever you come across it, and usually it comes across in your Zayt Sab with uh, Ahmadis are Muslims, Ahmadis are not Muslims. You're going to get a lot of, of hate with any tweet that you're sending out. And um, expect it. Expect it because there's no, there's no truthfulness without, um, without any uh, discrimination with it. And it's just a natural thing. Whenever a prophet comes, you're always going to have opposition. So yeah. you're, going, you're going to get to experience that as well in the, in the very minute level, not what the prophets ever experienced. So uh, with us, you know, whenever we get one message uh, of, of, of threat, you know, we immediately become very, very reserved. You know, we would, we would do everything to stay in the house, you know, we'd um, try to protect us and the family as much as we can. But this is the every day of a prophet, every day of a... Of a of a Sahaba, they were living this every single day with this threat above their head. Any day, their lives can be taken. So, and in exactly the same way, with us, we should try to try to follow those footsteps of defending Islam in, in the best possible way. And we're lucky to be able to even understand what social media is. Um, a lot of people don't even know how to use Instagram, how to use Twitter. The weird thing uh, is that, that post it came up on you know one of those meme pages. Like I don't know, it was like on yeah, this page. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. It was so random for me to see it and then just it was crazy how people become into fanatics all of a sudden yeah and they always hold on to this one this one allegation about has a muslim passing me on the toilet and That's they exactly. always always refer to this everyone will refer to this because they don't know they don't know he didn't actually pass away on the toilet um and so that's that's what we have to look at and try to educate and get those answers the fixed answers which you could just send to them you don't have to make any effort just copy and paste it and that's it your job is done uh, so can I just say something? Um, NASA honestly smashed it. Um, that's really, really good. I think um, one reason, obviously, we've got so many uh, resources, uh, Al Islam, and you know, we've got those different uh, um, resources. If it is on something like Instagram or Twitter as well, if it's 
there's a page M the answers. I'm sure everyone knows about the, the page. It's quite quick and easy. He's got a website as well. Mm. If you're ever struggling for allegations or anything like that at all, if you go onto his Instagram or his website or whatever, and then you can just, I think, I don't know if there's, there's a search feature or not, but you can literally find out from there what to do. Yeah. Um, and if you're really struggling with things, and plus he's got YouTube channels, got YouTube videos. So if you're really struggling, and if you're having a general discussion with someone, then I think it's a good thing that if you've got these resources and go, look, I don't, if, for example, like a lot of times I have to hold my hands up and say, look, I don't know anything more, but I'll research or read this link or whatever. I've actually had it in the past where um, I had uh, one of my uni friends, a really close friend, um, and we were at uni, we were in his car, we were just driving to go eat, and then um, I don't know, we got in a discussion of Islam, and uh, he said to me, oh, there's this other... Uh, other sect guardianis and this and I'm sitting, <laughs> at this point he didn't know what I was so he's sitting up uh, he's sitting sitting there talking and um it's me and my other mates and him and um he is he's like oh they believe this they believe in Mirza Allah member then they believe that he's this and that mm. and the first time um I didn't know enough at all so I just said oh, go on, you know tell me what they believe and stuff so I, I wanted to know what his thought was yeah. and then he told me and I was like okay fine and a couple of weeks later he mentioned it again and he was talking to me and then um we parked up we carried on this discussion and then i go to him like sad do, do you know i'm an md and he looked at me and goes nah. <laughs> said, yeah, no, no, no i am he goes what do you mean i go yeah, yeah i'm an md and he goes no you can't be bro i said why and he goes he goes you can't be because you read namaz like i do i was like yeah and he goes and you fast like i do and i was like yeah and he goes and you believe the things that i believe i said yeah and he goes nah nah bro you go do your research you're not <laughs> So he, he was shocked that I do everything that, and I still say them. We're yeah. still like really close mate. We still talk daily, you know, that sort of thing. So like that was the point I'm trying to make is now. So there's, there will be some point, some your close friends, you're fine. When they find out what you are, MD, they'll get rid, like they'll stop talking to you. But mate, yeah. good riddance, honestly. Or, or end of yeah. the day, you don't need to waste your energy on that. You just yeah. need to just, like Ruby Zal said, not go out there to convert someone, just try to defend Islam, and then come to Sahel Islam and hold up to Islam. And that's, that's all we can do, really. That's our remit, I would say. Yeah. One time I was in uni, and um, I told the guy I'm MD, and he, and he was like, nah, my mum told me to stay away from you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, you're in my kitchen eating some food right now. You're going to be here at the moment. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, me. That's crazy. That's yeah, I've got a few mates in the group. We just drop now. Like, you can just, you can just it's the negative atmosphere that they bring you and mm. when you mention cool. Ahmadiyya. But yeah, yeah, I'll share, I'll share one account with you. And um, it's literally when I came to Warsaw. I'm coming from, I'm coming from a, a countryside where it's just white people, right? And I'm coming to Warsaw. It's <laughs> predominantly Pakistani Asian. So me and my wife, we just ordered uh, from Heavenly Desserts in Warsaw, and uh, it was quite late, so we didn't want to go out. So then this guy rocks up, little Pakistani guy, with a cap, and then he just looks at me, he's like, it's not a mosque, brother, it's not a mosque, don't call it a mosque. I was like, what? Because yeah, don't you know who these people are? They're, they're pigs, they brainwash children and all this thing. And I was like, I was listening, I was like, Chow, okay, what else do they do? <laughs> and he's looking at me like, yeah, like I'm one of him. And he's like talking, to me, like, stay with people. And then he just kept saying, kept going on about this thing, but they brainwash people, they believe in another prophet, and you know, their prophet died in the toilet and all these kind of things. I was at this time, I thought, okay, okay. And I was really hungry at that time. So I was like, bro, just pray for them, man. Just pray for them. <laughs> I just said, give me my food because I'm really hungry. And uh, as soon as, I, as, soon as I, I went inside the house, I was, I was in a state of shock. I, just, I had to put on a, front, a good face in front of him. Then I was like to my wife, look, we've come in a, we've come in a different land. Like, we've come in a place where, you know, Ahmadis are discriminated. Whereas where we're from, uh, near Islamabad, you know, it's not like that. People know who we are, people respect us. But um, it just goes to show, like, you know, it's, it's a real thing. And we're living around it. But we need to learn how to deal with it and not put ourselves in danger. Because that's not what we're there for. We're not just, when we see, when we see fire, we're not just going to jump into it. So make precautions to, to, to educate people and um, to really like manage the situation in the best possible way. But yeah, anyways, we, we, we forwarded a complaint to the company and everything and you know, it was dealt with, but um, it's, a, it's a very shocking experience for anyone to go through, um, especially when you have wife and kids and stuff and you have people to protect. So never put yourself in danger 
um, but to learn how to manage in, in the best possible way. But I think that's the, the main message. And this is why Hazim Asimov's books are so important, that we learn all these things and try to apply them in our lives. Tiga. Um, just to brighten up the mood now, um, we'll go to Nasser's amazing Kahoot. Who won last week? <laughs> I forgot. Is it Nassab, me? Guys, I'm hearing things that you, you sent uh, messages to Nasser about making more football questions. Yeah. I, I, actually, I, I actually told Nasser to include more cricket ones and sport uh, ones. Uh, he said to me, he goes, oh, wait, should we get football ones? He goes, yeah, yeah. I said, but you're going to win. He goes, exactly, bro. <laughs> nah, that's not true. Nasser rang me. Well, Brother Sab, you're listening, yeah? We're talking. I actually said, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I actually said, include more cricket and sports questions because I said, yeah. football ones, are, it'll be. Uh, I'll, I'll know him. You'll win, yeah. 7,000 points for Kaid Sabner. <laughs> oh, my just, God. No, no. Nasser, watch. I just, I just stand. We have Dr. Sham. Uh, he won the first week. And Kaid Sab, he won the second week. So, every Alhamdulillah. week. Alhamdulillah. Inconsistent winners. So, Nas, <laughs> make it a good one today. Let's get this started. Okay, everyone, um, just on your phones or your laptop, whatever, just go on uh, kahoot.it. Can you make sure you do the split screen this time, yeah? Yeah, this time. <laughs> I'll be I've done it, don't worry. <laughs> really prepared, no uh, <laughs> Is that Taha? Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Yeah, Sorry, also, doing late. Nah, I was going to say, uh, I didn't know you were on, but bro, that beard's looking hefty. <laughs> <laughs> Not the only thing. <laughs> Nas, you can turn the, um, the music off, you know. Yeah, I'll yeah, turn yeah, that off. Nas, to put uh, another one, bro. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Zaid boy's always on it, ready. Look at him, ready. <laughs> Definitely, man. Shall I just put RQ this time and a bit of authority? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That means we have to let you in, Fed Sub. <laughs> Can you guys see like, the cam the, everyone's video on my screen or no? Yes. So you can see me moving it around like this? No. No, you can't see your mouse. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. It's like I've got everyone's. No, that's your mouse is moving. Your mouse is moving. Yeah. Oh, but you can't see what I'm dragging in it. No, 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 no. Your no. face is in it. I thought it might be blocking the screen for you guys. Who's no. Babaji? That's to me, <laughs> brothers. <laughs> it's not. It's not Avir again, is it? Avir, is that you? <laughs> it must be. Who's <laughs> ask you assistant? <laughs> you got a fan IQ sub. Oh. <laughs> I don't ah, that's scary man. Is that Ibi? Ibi on? No. We'll find out at the end. Maybe it's Nas Google. No, Google's there, Google's there. <laughs> Google's been quiet today. Is this FIFA Pro? How many people are there? Zumre, Zumre, is he still on? I know Zumre said to me yeah, that uh, yeah. I don't know if it was last week or the week before he couldn't get on and yeah. <coughs> be he's on. just making excuses because he knew there was a Man United question. Nah, Zumre goes, he's on. <laughs> so he's here. <clears throat> now, legitly, who's FIFA? Pro? This is wrong, man. We need to know who everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> who's the we'll eleventh? He was the 11th player because he keeps coming on. No, there, was, there was 12. Yeah, there was yeah. 12. I said Nuri came on for a bit as well. Oh, did he? Good. Thank God because I've been messaging. Mansoor couldn't come on today, he said, but he's been on the other weeks. Um, Nuri came on. Oi, oi. Yeah, so uh, no, Sa um, Sabur, I messaged him. I don't know if Sabur finishes work or what, what his plan is. He didn't uh, respond actually. He sees the messages, but. Um, Mansoor wasn't on this week, I think. Nuri, that's good that he came on for a bit. Um, so that's good. Who's, who's is Talha, Talha from coming north? Yeah. Mansoor <laughs> <laughs> is behind on the ground, so he's finishing that. K and that. <laughs> yes, K. That big K. K now. One letter, K. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the Mister this week. <laughs> yes. No, no, I, think that's, I think that's everyone, bro. I'll start to then, all right. Oh, we've got 12. Uh, does everyone? <laughs> Hamza, is Hamza on? Is Harry our Q assistant? Is Harry still on? Hamza, you're not playing. All right, I'm going to start it now. I'm going to start it. Wait, no, wait for Hamza, wait for Hamza. Oh. 
Shall I go back? Damage is done. No, Hamza's okay. not replying. Okay, fine, let's start. This is a trick question, though. Is it first established or am I in the wrong one? The first bear or first. No, I'm yet like. When was the first creator? Really first bear? I think I clicked the wrong one. I have no idea. Oh, crap, I'm pressing the stream. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 1889 was the first bet, though. Oh, same oh, that's the only date yeah. I reckon. Ah, it wasn't got established. It. I got it right. That's what I'm saying. Who <laughs> <laughs> is our Q assistant, man? It's Harry. It's got to be Harry. <laughs> I don't want to. He put Hanji. He revealed himself. Name the hottest oh. chili in the world. The ass is copy by. Oh, I got this wrong. Carolina Reaper. Oi, come here. Come here. <coughs> come here. Yeah. Yes, I got this. Did you get it? Sam, come here. Mm. Yeah. Put your face down. Oi. <laughs> Baba D there. Who's Baba G, man? <laughs> Sit next to me. We right. don't need hoodie every week. Yeah, we Even numbers are preferred in Islam, true or false. Next year. Oh, <laughs> I forgot it wrong. Have you got any uh, background on that? Why odd numbers are preferred? Because Allah's on his own, I think. I'm not sure, maybe. Yeah, it's true. That's one of the reasons. Allah says he loves uh, the odd numbers, which is why we read Vitr to finish off our prayers in the odd number. Mm. Vitr literally means odd. <laughs> Quick fact. I did not know that. Okay. Are you still topping it? Who first built the Kaaba? Debatable. <laughs> yeah, it can be like both. Hadar Ibrahim and Rasul Smaila Yeah, I know. I was thinking. Yeah. That's loads of a lot of thinking. Even Hazrat Adam, you know, they say it's the first ever house of worship. So How about you on the air? During the time of Hazrat Adam. Yeah. <coughs> Who has won the most 2020 international wickets? Oh, Oi, we're about to start. Come on. It has to be Malinga. Come on. I guessed. We're about to start. Oh my. Yes, really? Yes. <laughs> Shahid Afridi, yeah. Only one person got it. I can't believe it. It's all buddies, I'm telling you. Everyone else has gone down. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same. Oh my days. It's the same. Uh, name the largest river in the UK. Yeah. This is a trick question. Can you spell seven right, please? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> seven. <laughs> That's, that's the right way to spell it, I think. Yeah. Seven, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Murabi Sub's coming up. Oh, oh cute, man. That's you good. Might just all talk. <laughs> and he's got the answer. <laughs> what the heck, Nas? Are you silly? What's my pat in the back of my cat? Oh, I don't even know. That's a good question, actually. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get in there, boys. This year, but I don't know. How is? Oh, okay. Just hear it, yeah. How did I not move? Who is the imam of the mosque? That is a sick photo. That is good. It is. And you know, the, the first Imam of this mosque, Fadal Mosque, was my great grandfather. The first Imam of Masjid Fadal Mosque. He was oh, Sahaba. Is she Rafiq Sahab? Sardar Mizbauddin Sami Sahab. Okay. Mm. Okay, so these four people I'm reporting. Reporting. Oh, Rob is a hat to take the lead there. Oh, but I've got it right as well. Yes. Go, go be quick. Mate. Go be quick. <laughs> Just like in football, man. Too slow. Which of these prime ministers was also a captain of a cricket team? Yes, yes, yes. 
was the easiest one. Oh god, okay. Oh, That's all right. All right. <laughs> that was a toe, I guess. That was a toe. Yeah, same. <laughs> Okay, exactly. Oh, <laughs> Assistant versus the RQ. Who <laughs> has won the most Ballon d'Or awards? That's a silly question. But not the same. Yeah, I thought it was the same. Messi's got one more. Really? What a gun. Oh, man, I'm done on the Is that Sam? Sam's there, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sam. All right. Has he got six? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Is it, who's Babaji? Is that Taha? No, I'm way down. Must be, <laughs> must be a bead. <laughs> 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 yeah. Where was the promise I born? It's an obvious one. Come on. Easy okay, one. that one person, is, um, Robbie Saab, can you write that to us, please? Yeah, please. <laughs> you gave the wrong answer. <laughs> I'm texting my letter right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's still the same as the time. Oh, it's uh, keeping repetition up. Man. How many different ways can a batsman be dismissed? What? Yeah, like, how many times can it get out? Like, you know, Complete guess. That's a good question. I don't remember all of them, but obviously the one's broken. was worded really bad. That was a fluke. Oh Caught yeah, out, yeah. timed out, and then there's so many, I don't know. Yeah, timed time. out? Yeah, there's only a timeout as well. Yeah, it's really oh weird. That's according to you, according to official rules. Official rules? Come on, I'm not going to come out of my head. Only in the quiz can you be timed out, not in cricket, bro. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Babaji, who's that Babaji, man? <laughs> He's coming for you, mate. How many letter uh, tiles are there in the game of Scrabble? What does that mean? Oh, no. oh, that's a hard question, man. What the heck? I have no idea. <laughs> Definitely got this wrong. Oh, yes, boys. Come on. I've got the book for you, mate. I'm coming. <laughs> oh, Nas is coming oh, up. Too far away, man. Who's your first name? Babaji, come on, man. Ruin for you. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the first revolution of the Holy Grand take place? Mount Judy. Well, I clicked it, but it didn't click on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about, mate? This is destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babaji's gonna head me now, I can tell. Nah, they were slow as well. Too slow. Z, is that you? Mama no, I'm an RQ assistant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. Space. What exactly was the first revelation? So leading on to that question. That's some Sony translation, man. Yeah, there is, you know. Reading the name of your lord. I knew it was that. Yeah, I was looking for a recite. I was looking for read or recite. It wasn't that. <laughs> That's what was it was. Convey, bro. That was the confusing one. Listen, <laughs> That's I was asking, why is so many different translations? Like, there's, there's a read. But you don't think of yeah. taking the Jamaat one? <laughs> the MD one, bro. <laughs> oh, that is, that is the MD one. You know that? That's the MD one. Uh, there's so many other ones, like, read and then, like, just. That's the right one, bro. <laughs> read one. <laughs> recite. It mean, yeah, it means the same like convey aircraft. Oh, yeah. boy. It's close, it's close. We've got three in a row there, look at that. Babaji, are they? With 260 goals, who's the Premier League all time top of the Is it Rooney? Everyone must. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Speed that I did this at is an incredible. You <laughs> <laughs> knew that before it, the answers came up in it. Did I actually did? Yeah. Apple seeds are poisonous in higher quantities. True or false? Oh. Things riding on this question, guys. Up. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> oh, <he's> got, yeah. <laughs> I got it as well, it's just the speed. Yeah. What about the speed? 
Okay, which of these actors are MD? I oh, know this, oh, no, this one. I know this one. Vin Diesel. <laughs> is this Ahmadi by name or Ahmadi? That his name. Oh, who put Bora? Yeah, he's. I think there's pictures of him eating his own. Mahershala Ali, bro. Spoken to him. Good guy. Yeah. Are we allowed to be an actor? I don't know if he's allowed to do some of the scenes he does. Wasn't he in a gay film? Fuzur just Fuzur said this. It's his own personal thing, so it's not anything to do with the Jamaat. But then, do you know if someone in the Jamaat did that, wouldn't they get kicked out? He is a Jamaat. Nasser, don't start doing dawah on him, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking, bro. I don't <laughs> How long did the longest uh, recorded test match last oh, for? Oh, oh, cricket. Oh. I don't know what 12 match was. The one that says, doesn't say days, I think. <laughs> Oh, no way! Yeah. What a guess. I don't know why I didn't write days there. I thought 12 too long, man. I would have given up after four. Like... <laughs> I, know, long. I didn't know they went out that long. Oh, <gasps> top. Who's Q? Yeah. Right, Gubby boy. Oh. Maybe, maybe I told him some answers before. Oh, 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 oh. That's an apple question to him, bro. <laughs> Which Power Rangers series was the oh, first? Come on, yes. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> My <What>? team often. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> first and the best one to go by. Yeah. Okay. What part was that? Oh, yeah. Bye. Consistently in the top three. Well done, Kavi. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Mashallah. Well done. It's because you did the speech today. They spoke with the speech, man, and his, his kid got involved as well. Yeah. <laughs> Babaji was in top five. <laughs> 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 it was me. <laughs> we go, lads. Uh, any feedback? No, it's very good. Oh, this one was good. Is it more questions this time? Yeah, I did, I did 20 questions. You said. So, do you, you guys think it was too long? Or? I actually thought it was over at 10. Good luck, Lennox. No, I thought. I wanted to request, please. Um, Please, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if we spoke about just yet or not, or if it went away or not. But Azul and uh, he's had a fall, and uh, I think he hurt his knees and his head and his nose. And, uh, uh, the doctors have. Uh, and that's why he didn't uh, wasn't able to um, do the five So please, in your prayers, please, please, please. Yeah, no, we already discussed it at the, at the start when you went. I didn't know if I just turned on it, I could change it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you know. Gaudi. I saw that sound. Have you muted? Yes, sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking and I was like, you're something. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Um, yeah, guys, so we spoke about this on the, at the beginning. Yeah, Guys, have any 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 update for the region? Um, <clears throat> one second, Sam. It's fine. Um, one thing I want to mention is um, again, the Khalik efforts are still ongoing. Um, uh, Sam, Sam, Nathan, give me a ring about, please. Um, uh, look, activities are ongoing, um, but um, uh, I was just going to mention that, um, for example, um, Birmingham, so Wolverhampton, uh, with, with through Zaid Bar, they're stepping up a lot. They've um, recently they delivered to the um, Wolverhampton Hospital. Um, only I think yesterday, Zaid Bar also delivered again to Wolverhampton Hospital, and I think on Monday they've uh, got um, they were. It can be happening at care homes. Then they were also donating food. I think um, uh, I found out today um, uh, that they donated food to uh, uh, again to um, is it Glebe? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, throughout the region, well, uh, this, that, that's still happening and still going on. Um, just a little, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, what so the Sar basically said to me while everyone's on the call, that Sar basically said to me that although he's grateful and very appreciative of the efforts that Padama are putting in, etc., but he, he did mention that as a region he expects more from West Midlands. So, um, one thing I want to say is to that, and he wanted me to pass my, um, uh, you know, um, regards to all of the and helping, but he does still think we can do more. Um, so just wanted to say, guys, don't don't give up or don't stop, even if it looks as a lockdown might be ending. There's still lots of work we can be doing. So reach out to your contacts and reach out to everyone that you can, and then let's start helping with food banks with anything that we can, gloom, vision <coughs> aiders, etc. Um, so keep keep working hard, please. That's that was all. From my side. I think that's about it really. Just um, just another point that we're in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Um, these are the 10 days which won't come again in the whole year. So <coughs> make sure you're praying a lot as God said, you said, um, especially. Um, never a better time for, to pray for him uh, and to remember him and uh, everyone in your, in your prayers. So just to really focus on that. People are doing it the uh, these days as well. So. Remember them as well in your prayers that uh, whatever they pray for is accepted and um, whatever we pray for as well is, is accepted and inshallah um, we're able to find Laylat al Qadr um, to find that night of the decree where all our prayers will be answered. So use it as a springboard for the next coming months and inshallah everyone's year will be blessed. Um, so make use of this time especially. So pray for everyone guys and pray for the Jamaat, pray for West Midlands as well. And inshallah the next coming year we'll be able to come to the top and really show people um how it how much advanced as a region together i think that will be the main thing in China. but it needs everyone's help as you know guys up it's not easy we need the whole team aboard definitely definitely i agree oh. so, yeah, what are you gonna say man huh the whole time you're right yeah i'm gonna laugh i'm gonna laugh sitting i've just downloaded twitter after a reading ever after hearing that story i was very antisocial on social media, bro. It's usually the antisocial ones who are on social media, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, antisocial on social media, otherwise, no. But yeah, just I already three ad. Thinking yeah. of a name. Desire, desire, keep us, keep us in touch uh, when um, all these hashtags are happening. So I think the last one happened very quickly. Um, not many people knew about it. The last one was yeah, I mean, like last time, this one which happened was about the MDs are Muslim. I tagged. Um, our uh, West Midlands uh, Twitter account, which is Harun by, he picked it up and he started to basically, you know, respond very actively on that. Mm -hmm. And Marshall, obviously, uh, a lot of five others, as I said, they, you know, they took part, and Qadams, they do, took part as well. So if we're not, we're all on like Snapchat and all these things as well. You know, download Twitter as well, and it's pretty simple. It's not, it's not that complicated. All you just have to do is just retweet and so easy. you know, put your own post on there as well and tag when you want to get someone make awareness of something as well so it's yeah. pretty simple to get involved everyone should you know try to get involved so yeah, yeah. um uh, i was just gonna mention yeah i think with the twitter campaign the uh, the last one that we had i think that was a uh, um, that was like a last minute thing um but the other ones we normally get a couple of days notice or uh, three four days notice but um Alhamdulillah, even still, it was a last-minute thing. The um, the amount um, of the arm that uh, helped and the uh, region stuff uh, that we helped with, and we still last minute we did show up. So um, again, um, just just be alert, especially during these times. Might be called upon last minute. Let's just keep um, stay alert. And be on it. Let's really push in everyone's in their own kiyad. It's just uh, I know Barisa, Marshall are doing a really good job with your with your group. But we need effort throughout the whole region. Um, I don't know how we're going to do that, but it's all about your own circle and pushing each other. And literally, just even anyone, even old people can just go on their phone. My grandmother, for example, she never uses Twitter. She just goes on and retweets anything she sees. <laughs> so it's as <laughs> easy as that. And that's how you're going to get the you're going to get onto the trend. And uh, anyone can do it. Even your own parents, you know, make accounts for your parents and just tell them, just retweet whatever whatever you're posting. So yeah, man, that's it. So you go, guys. Also, it's nice to catch up as always. Uh, keep it regular, man. Just um, 
seeing each other. If we didn't have this, I don't think we would see each other as often, maybe not at all. So we need to keep this up. Uh, inshallah, we'll keep getting the word out as well, guys. Um, it's just about deciding the program. Uh, Ramadan's a busy time, especially for me as well, just um, preparing darits every single day and stuff. So a bit of weakness on my side a lot. You guys still think that's about it, man. I think we'll get ready for a study now. Yeah. Robert Salva, I just wanted to say that um, just check your spelling on Twitter because I had a screenshot sent to me the other day saying food delivered by, and someone tweeted food delivered by Amdiya Muslim assassination. So, <laughs> just check your spelling before you tweet. <laughs> I think now can just check your spelling on computer as well, yeah? Yes. <laughs> uh, got, we've got a call now, B, and I've got a call in two minutes. So please, Ijazat, if you can. Yeah, guys, have a again. Just having you on the call makes it all, all worth it. Jazakallah, bro. Inshallah, better, better luck next time in Kahoot. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket questions work, I think. That recite one that NASA lied, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the postman pack question, I think. Yeah, that was the hardest. <laughs> NASA with that recite one, man. Let yeah. me down, man. Well, okay, guys. Jazak, Mullah, Thank you, everyone. Nice to see everyone again. Inshallah, we'll catch up again next week. Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry.